A game that was once an afterthought has evolved into a discussion over the last couple of seasons. Now the underdog enters with a better record. Hello everybody and welcome into Game Day U. I'm your host Dylan Rivera. Alongside me is Jimmy Wicks, Carly Murray and Parker Abels. As always, before we get into this week, let's go back to last week and look into the Red River Showdown. I'll keep it brief because we all know it was a very ugly game. Here you see Bijan Robinson punching in the first touchdown of the game. He'd finished the game with 130 yards and two TDs on the ground. Quinn Ewers, the freshman phenom, with four touchdown tosses in his first game back from injury. Steve Sarkeesian gets his first Red River win in his career with a 49 to nothing final at the Cotton Bowl. Now, that's probably enough of the Red River, so let's stop it there and pivot to the biggest news from this week in OU football. On Wednesday, the football program announced new alternate unity uniforms. The uniforms were created by a handful of former players to honor the Sooners' first black scholarship player, Prentice Gott. And personally, I'm a big fan of the uniforms. I think uh, it actually makes for a nice distraction from the fact that Oklahoma has been outscored 104 to 24 in their last two games. Look, guys, the Texas loss was bad, very bad really bad. But there's going to be some growing pains. You lose 40% of your production from last season, plus a Heisman level QB and a new coaching staff. There will be troubles going into the season. Yeah, everybody was looking at me sideways when I said that Texas was going to win this football game. But I think Dylan Gabriel will be back today and that'll be really good for the Sooners. So hopefully he can go get Oklahoma a win today. Yeah, you know, last week I said the TCU game was the worst I've ever seen OU play. That's no longer true because Quinn Ewers <laughs> picked apart that OU defense. B. John Robinson had a big part in that too, but OU just got Texas at the wrong time. Hopefully, they're going to get Kansas at the right time today. Now, today, as we all know, Oklahoma is playing Kansas for the uh, Sooners. The quarterback has been in question. I'll let Jimmy touch on that here in a moment. But for the Jayhawks, they find themselves in a similar situation. Regular starter Jalen Daniels hurt his shoulder in the second quarter of last week's contest with TCU. Sooner fans might shudder when they hear this, but Jason Bean is expected to get the start today. Here's what Jeffrey Johnson said on how the Sooners can possibly contain Bean. I, I think it's uh, really going to take, you know, just everybody doing their job, you know, as part of a system, as part of a team, everybody doing their job. And I feel like uh, once you do your job, production comes from you doing your job. So I feel like everybody has to be schematically sound on, you know, just doing their part. Last week in the Cotton Bowl, we didn't see the best QB play, but with no Dylan Gabriel, I don't put any stock in how bad the Sooners played. Bevel threw for 6 for 12 for 38 yards and a pick, coupled with the fact that everybody in the stands knew that they can only run the ball to make this offense go, and it was completely one-dimensional. With D, D expected back this week, this offense should get back on their feet, but Jeff Levy says it doesn't start with the players, but it starts with the coaches. The expectation is, is to coach better first and, and play better secondly. Um, you know, with that being said, obviously a, a very short amount of time that, that Davis has been here uh, to get him up to speed with how we want to operate and how we want to do things. Um, but again, the expectation is to play a heck of a lot better and, and coach a heck of a lot better. The Sooners defense is allowing a 45% success rate in third downs to opponents. Oklahoma can't stop teams from converting. They need to be more aggressive and start blitzing the quarterback on first or second down. The defense needs to create more pressure to stop the chains from moving. Ted Roof knows that this is a big issue for his defense. Part of it is, is that we got to get off the field on third down. If we want to play less, we got to get off the field on third down. And uh, when we have opportunities to do that, we got to take advantage of them and get off the field. Because if you look at what's happened when we haven't on third down, it's resulted in points for the opposition a lot, way too much this, this season. Yeah, the Sooners have to get off the field on third down. But my question is, where do the Sooners go from here? OU has lost by 30-plus in the last two games. How are they going to respond to the adversity? And what's it going to take for them to finish the season on a positive note? Here's what QB1 has to say about that. Putting your, you know, your right foot um, in front of the other and, and keep, keep walking, keep, you know, striving to, to get better every single week and every single day. Um, you know, it is tough. You know, it's something that it's uncharted territories for a lot of the guys and um, something we, we got to just continue to strive through and, and be great and find ways to be better because, you know, the margin of error is, is really slim and, and we're really close, but um, just got to continue to, like I said, try to get better every single day and, and find a way. Now, before we go anywhere, Addie Crawford joins us live with an update on what a Sooner fan favorite is up to these days. Addie. 
That's right, Dylan. That Sooner fan favorite is now the owner of a food truck right here on Campus Corner, and it's always around on game days. Stick around to find out more. Welcome back to Game Day U. A former Heisman Trophy finalist has found a new game to climb to the top of. Reporter Addie Crawford is live on Campus Corner at the Go Crazy End Zone Eats food truck. Good morning, you guys, and happy game day. If you're a longtime Sooner fan like I am, then the name Dee, Dee Westbrook, it definitely rings a bell. And he's the owner of this food truck right behind me. Take a look. I got to see a sneak peek of what you can expect on game days at his food truck. It's the food truck that always scores. Hey! <laughs> Sooner fans know Dee, Dee Westbrook from his days as an OU and NFL wide receiver. I just love the university because, uh, you know, the things that I did for the university, the fans also, you know, kind of remind me and let me know the things that I did, and they're very supportive. <laughs> now fans. We take pictures and we crack jokes you know, and, and different things of that nature. You can find him on game days at his new food truck. The name, Go Crazy In Zone Eats. Crazy is kind of my brand, so that's kind of something I've been saying since I've been at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, so that's kind of how Go Crazy came about, and the End Zone Eats pretty much there from my sister. You know, she was kind of like, why not do End Zone Eats? She wanted to do End Zone Bites, but I was like, that kind of sound like a dog, puppy chow or something, so. Don't get it twisted. Dee Dee isn't the one cooking. Do you ever go in the food truck and actually cook the food too? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Y'all don't want that. <laughs> Ijoma Odimwe, a former OU basketball player, is the magic behind the menu. Everything is mine. And we always have a good time. Like, yes. Always really good vibes. Everybody's always in a really good mood. We joke around a lot, so it just makes it feel less like work. Thank you, boss. Appreciate it. And this face is a main reason customers walk to the truck. It's super cool that it's his. I mean, like, definitely made me want to come here because it's D.D. Westbrook's, obviously. 12! <laughs> well, I have D.D. Westbrook right here next to me. I'm going to ask him a couple questions. D.D., what is your favorite thing on the menu? Uh, my favorite thing on the menu as of right now is the uh, Cajun catfish pasta. And I'm not saying that because it's the most expensive thing on the menu. It's actually pretty good. Okay, I'll have to try that out today after we're done. And how long are you here until how long can fans find you? Uh, they can find me here until about 5 or 6 o'clock before we got to go to our next gig. But uh, I'm here pretty much all day actively uh, interacting with fans each and every time they come, taking pictures and different things of that nature. All right, well, thank you so much. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Addie, and thanks, Dee Dee. Sometimes with athletes, fans forget their people, too. Ethan Downs shared a personal story from his summer that he says had him more nervous than any game day. Game Day U's Hallie Moss has the story from Big 12 Media Days. For Ethan Downs, one of Oklahoma's leaders this year and a hometown boy, playing in Norman was always the dream, and that dream is just getting started. Um, family loves OU. A lot of tradition, a lot of culture. Grew up Oklahoma kid, so I'm living the dream. As for goals for the upcoming season, Downs has a clear vision. I just want to be great and not, not great to impress everybody in the stands, not great to impress cameras, not great to impress coaches, but just to be great. It's been an eventful last couple of months for Downs in more ways than one. The sophomore recently got engaged and the nerves may have been higher than fourth quarter in the Cotton Bowl. I, I was so nervous. <laughs> My, my leg was shaking. I almost threw up on her. No, I'm playing. Um, third of July, right before the fireworks and stuff. Uh, just kind of the spirit of Fourth of July, the fireworks, all that. And it was a surprise to her. Her mom knew. She went with me to buy the ring, and it was a great time. It's safe to say he's got an exciting year ahead of him, and hopefully less nerves on his wedding day. Reporting from AT&T Stadium, Hallie Moss, Game Day U. Thanks, Hallie. Coming up, we look into the incoming Kansas squad and take a dive into the rest of the Big 12.
Welcome back to Game Day U. Dylan Rivera, Jimmy Wicks, Carly Murray, Parker Abels here with you. It's a great game that has been really more important for the Sooner season as it's gone along. Uh, the 19th ranked Kansas Jayhawks make their way onto Owen Field today. And let me provide a little bit of history for this matchup. Kansas has not beaten the Sooners in the 21st century. The last time KU got the win was 1997. 20 to 17 was the final score. And the overall record? OU is 79-27-6 and six against the Jayhawks. Lance Leopold has made a complete 180 with this Kansas squad. Jason Bean has came out firing and coming in for Jason Daniels. Bean has also had a solid outing last year against the Sooners. Kansas scores almost 40 points a game this season, so look for the Jayhawks to put up points in the Palace. Yeah, Kansas has the second most efficient offense in the Big 12. This is a powerhouse offense. Ted Roof should definitely be concerned. They can move the ball on the ground and through the air. Against TCU, the Jayhawks had 540 total yards, and they averaged 38.8 points per game. That's electric. I mean, the Jayhawks are 5-1, and one, which means they're one win away from their first bowl game since the 2008 Orange Bowl. They're also currently ranked 19 in the country, which is their first time in the AP poll since October 25th, 2008. It's safe to say this is a historic season for the Jayhawks. They're riding high, and a win in Norman could be the icing on the cake for this team. Now we've got something really special for you. Our producer, Pierce Levelholz, normally not in front of the camera, has a report on a couple of Jayhawks hoping to hear their name on Sundays. The Kansas Jayhawks are gearing up for their second season under head coach Lance Leopold, and the program is already taking steps in the right direction with two players from both sides of the ball garnishing attention from the NFL draft boards. Senior safety Kenny Logan Jr. made the preseason All-Big 12 team for the first time in his career after ranking third in solo tackles in the nation in 2021. But the electric DB has a different take for this season. Um, this year I don't, I don't really plan on uh, being that high in tackles. Uh, I want to definitely make the tackles when I need to make them, but I definitely want to be ranked that high in interceptions. I definitely want to try to give our offense the ball back and, and just create plays like that. On the opposite side of the ball, Redshirt senior left tackle Earl Bostic Jr. is looking to fill roles on and off the field. The specific goal I truly have is trying to uh, be a better leader, uh, first, uh, first and foremost, and that's like with be a better leader and be a better, uh, like I say, a better brother instead of a teammate. Like I say, my time is like running short and stuff like that, and then I want to like leave that legacy of like. Uh, behind me, after uh, like after I leave the old line, I want to make sure that uh, once I leave, somebody don't step up and do the same thing uh, that what I did and do even better. Logan and Bostic Jr. both look to lead Kansas to the first bowl game since 2008. Reporting from Arlington, Pierce Levelholtz, OU Nightly. Thank you, Pierce. A game that I think should be regarded as an upset, a ranked matchup, and OU in Texas on upset watch. It's a big weekend in the Big 12. Texas Tech and Kansas State are on a bye week this weekend, so neither school in action. But among the other teams, I think Oklahoma State and TCU is a battle between the two hottest teams in the conference right now. That's the one to watch. Right, I agree. And Iowa State and Texas face off this weekend, and the Longhorns' confidence is an all-time high after the waxing in Dallas with Quinn Ewers back healthy, the Texas trio of B. John Robinson, Xavier Worthy, and the quarterback are back in full force. Iowa State is winning. Winless in conference play and only scoring 14 points a game. I'm expecting Texas to come out big with their team. I'm with Dylan. I'm really excited to see Oklahoma State at TCU. Both of these teams are undefeated and have strong offenses. Mac Duggan ranks fifth in QBR. It's 88.5, and he's completing 73% of his passes. That's insane. So I'm really excited for this quarterback matchup. Him, Spencer Sanders, it's going to be a good one. I want to talk about a game that happened on Thursday when West Virginia beat Baylor 43-40. Casey Legg hit a 22-yard field goal with 33 seconds left, giving the Mountaineers their first conference win of the year. Well, when game day you returns, we'll break down some key points for OU to get the win over Kansas. And our final score predictions are coming, so don't go anywhere. Back here in Studio A, Dylan Rivera here with Jimmy Wicks, Carly Murray, and Parker Abels. This game serves as a chance to turn the season around for OU, but to do that, there's some smaller things the team has to get right. For starters, the defensive line has gotten next to no pressure against conference opponents. Since returning from Nebraska, these Sooners have recorded one sack in the Red River Showdown. They recorded only two QB pressures. Whether it takes more stunts or extra blitzers from elsewhere on the field, they've got to get to opposing quarterbacks and get them out of their comfort zone. 
For me, it begins all up front. Ted Roof and his guys have struggled since the K-State game, and something has got to change. Oklahoma was embarrassed for the second week of Monroe up front, and it doesn't get any easier with Kansas. Oklahoma gave up almost all 700 yards last week to Kansas, in even with an even split on the air and on the ground. Roof mentioned that their defense needs to start mixing things up after week three, and defensive lineman Jeffrey Johnson says there be more of commitment to the scheme, which wasn't what you want to hear midway through conference play. I know once Dylan Gabriel is back, the offense will be running much smoother, but the Sooners have to get all of their playmakers involved to win games. Marvin Mims is without a doubt the most talented skilled player on the roster. He had only one reception for a loss of two yards against Texas, and Oklahoma's run game was starting up strong at the beginning of the OU Texas game, but now it's starting to fall off. In order to open up the pass game, you have to get the run game going to win football games, and I think today against Kansas, if they can get that run game going, it'll open up the pass game and they'll be able to put some points on the board. Mm -hmm. Well, it's no secret that Quinn Ewers was able to pass all over the OU DBs. Woody Washington had a chance to turn the tide with a pick earlier in the game, but missed it. And Texas was going on to score, and that was it. You have to take advantage of those opportunities. And Billy Bowman was out last week, and oh, you couldn't do anything. They need to step up and hopefully get Billy Bowman Jr. back sooner rather than later. Well, now it's time for our score predictions, and I have just one thing to say to Lance Leopold. You're not in Kansas anymore. OU gets the win 42-38 over the Jayhawks. For me, the Jayhawks are having a special season. This game has been circled on the calendar since last year's meltdown. Give me Kansas 31-28. to If Dylan Gabriel's back, I have the Sooners. If he's not, I have Kansas. So I'm going to say Gabriel's back, OU 35, Kansas 30. Hey, Jimmy, you had one thing right. The score was right, 31-28. You had the winning team wrong. OU wins 31-28. Carly, I think if Dylan Gabriel's playing, it's an OU victory. Well, that's all we have for these uh, three, but Game Day U rolls on with three new members of our team joining me in a few moments to pick all the big games from across the country. Stick around. We made a mass substitution in here, and now I'm joined by Stone Weber, Kenzie Iserman, and Tyler DeLuca. Got a lot on tap, and we start in the Big Ten. It's the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Jim Harbaugh-led Michigan Wolverines, one of the top two, uh, two top ten matchups this weekend. That's a tongue twister. Stone, who wins this one today? Dylan, you just touched on it. This is a battle of the unbeatens, and it will be a defensive matchup as Penn State has only given up 14.8 points per game, and Michigan has been even better, only giving up 11.3 both schools average close to 200 rushing yards on the ground, and Penn State is coming off that bye week, so I think the Nittany Lions will be a little rusty in this old-fashioned football game. Michigan goes on to win and will be 7-0 atop the Big Ten East. So, for starters, Michigan's offense is insane, and their defense is ranked fifth overall, so that's something that Penn State can't overlook. Michigan's defense has only given up eight touchdowns, proving that they are one of the best defenses in the nation. I got Michigan for this one. See, you guys are trusting that the khakis of Harbaugh aren't going to get creased in this one. But I got Penn State, and it will be far from easy. The Nittany Lions' best way to win this ballgame will be to punch first. That is something that Michigan has excelled at avoiding so far this season as they have scored first in all of their games. If Penn State can get points on the board first, force Michigan to play from behind, and get the ball to their backfield duo, they can win in Ann Arbor. A lot of people are speculating this game might be the deciding factor between the best team in the Big 12 Conference this year. It's Oklahoma State and TCU. Stone, who do you have? Like you said, matchup for the two best teams in the Big 12, and I think it will be high scoring due to the quarterback play, specifically from Max Duggan. I think TCU will come out on the win in this one. He has over 1,300 passing yards on the season, 17 passing touchdowns. He has the sixth best QBR in the nation at 88.3. His leading receiver, Quentin Johnson, only has 320 receiving yards, but that's because six wide receivers on the team have 100 or more yards. I think Spencer Sanders struggles today, and TCU will be on top of the Big 12. See, I agree with you. This game is going to be the battle of the QB. Spencer Sanders is insane with only two interceptions. On the other hand, Duggan only has one interception. This game is going to be close, but OSU will be on top. Yeah, I'm going to take Oklahoma State in this one to be the team that can bend the most before breaking. This game is bound to be high scoring, but I'm placing my faith in the Oklahoma State defense to come in clutch. I expect it's going to take a big defensive play in this game to decide the outcome. Give me OSU. I got the pokes as well, Stone. I'm sorry. There you go. Hendon Hooker and the Red Hot Vols picked up the win last week over LSU, but now they run into the machine from Tuscaloosa. Do the Crimson Tide stomp out the Cinderella story today? 
They do not. This is a historic matchup in Rocky Top today with the Vols looking to win against Alabama for the first time since 2006. And in my opinion, the Vols are a top five team in the country all because of Hendon Hooker. He has 1,400 yards on the season, 13 touchdowns, and zero interceptions. And although it looks like Bryce Young will play this weekend, the Tennessee offense will be Alabama's undoing. This game's going to be nail-biting, but I got Tennessee coming out on top, and let me tell you why. Hooker is an early Heisman favorite with 10 touchdowns through the air along with three rushing touchdowns and not a single interception. Tennessee is ranked number one for offense, so this is the only time I'm not saying roll tide. I don't know if you remember who we're talking about here, but this is Bryce Young, and it's official that he'll be playing. So today my pick is simple. Bryce Young plays, Bama wins. Roll tide. Now we discuss a game that two years ago wasn't much of a discussion, uh, but last year sparked some interest, and now this season it may be evenly matched. The struggling Oklahoma Sooners take on the Kansas Jayhawks across the street. Stone, are you rolling with the Sooners? I am not. I'm going with Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Kansas' starting quarterback is out today, but I just don't think that the Sooners' offense has it. KU wins this one. Honestly, the last three games for OU have been a struggle, so I got Kansas taking home the win for this one. You know what? Sue me for being slightly positive. Boomer Sooner, give me OU for homecoming. He's had a devious smile this I whole know. time, I'm, Tyler. I'm comfortable being the villain. <laughs> I'm going with the Sooners <laughs> today, as you saw in our last block of the show, so uh, we'll see if the Sooners get that victory or not. Well, that's all we have time for you for this week. Uh, it'll be a couple of Saturdays before we return because of the bye week, so Stone Weber, Kenzie Eisman, Tyler DeLuca, have a great and safe game day.